As far as our limited capacities are concerned, the sun is essentially an infinite and renewable energy source. It's like a giant fusion reactor millions of miles away, illuminating the Earth with as much energy as the whole of human civilization uses in a year. So why aren't we making more use of such a boundless source to solve all our energy-related problems? Well, we're actually pretty close to getting there, and in today's video, I will show you how. What is solar technology anyway? Before I let you in on the secret that could change the entire world's energy, energy consumption in a few decades, let's have a look at how solar panels work in the first place. Two main types of solar energy technologies are photovoltaics and concentrating solar thermal power. While both come with their own set of pros and cons, photovoltaic systems are considerably cheaper, and thus the most widely deployed solar electric technology in the world. Currently, only 2% of the world's electricity comes from solar power, 90% of which is generated from photovoltaic systems. Crystalline silicon-based photovoltaic systems systems are the most dominant material technology among those. Now, silicon is an excellent material, found abundantly on Earth with tons of properties that have benefited humanity over the years. But it has its fair share of drawbacks, preventing it from being an absolute go-to semiconductor to solve all our energy needs. Most of its cons are related to efficiency, manufacturing complexity, and pollution, so researchers have no choice but to limit its use on a large scale. But wait, what if I told you there's a material so efficient that it has the potential to replace all silicon based photovoltaic systems in a few years. A lightweight material that's relatively much simpler to produce at a substantially cheaper cost. A solution that can be used to make a photovoltaic cell so thin that only a tiny amount of it can be used to power an entire building. Well, that's what the scientists are calling solar 3.0 technology, and it is a material called perovskites. Swift Solar, leaders in perovskite solar technology. In order to understand how this revolutionary solar technology works, first let's take a look at what Joel Jean, the CEO of Swift Solar, one of the most prominent teams working on perovskite solar technology, has to say. A new kind of thin film technology, so you've probably heard of that for, for a long time. Different kinds of thin films have come and gone over the years. What we do here is a new kind of material, it's called perovskites. New semiconductor material that absorbs light really effectively, also transports charge, so it's, it just turns out to be a very efficient material for solar cells. So, the idea is basically to use perovskites to develop thin film cells in a way that maximizes energy utility and minimizes wastage. Unlike crystalline silicon-based photovoltaic systems that are fabricated on semiconducting wafers, these thin film cells are developed by depositing thin layers of semiconducting films onto a glass, plastic, or metal substrate. The best part about them, and one of the underlying reasons behind their efficiency, is that these thin film cells use 10 to 1,000 times less material than conventional semiconductor wafers used in photovoltaic systems today. Multiple other materials have been used over the years to make thin film cells, including amorphous silicon and cadmium telluride. But now, with the introduction of perovskites, most researchers have shifted their focus to this leading contender. So what exactly makes perovskites so useful anyway? Why are scientists hopeful about solar panels with 100 times the power-to-weight performance compared to conventional silicon panels? Effectiveness of perovskites The answer lies in the crystal structure of perovskite itself. Chemically speaking, perovskites are basically calcium-titanium oxide minerals composed of calcium titanate. These occur in nature. But the interesting part is that perovskites used in solar cells don't necessarily need to be mined from the Earth's surface. Instead, any material with a crystal structure following the formula ABX3 can be used as a perovskite, where A and B are two positively charged ions arranged along with X, a negatively charged ion. Now, without getting too technical, this basic structure structure of the perovskite crystal can be replicated using a wide variety of elements and minerals that would share the same conductive properties. So, it wasn't the discovery of perovskite itself that revolutionized solar technology. Instead, it was when scientists realized that they could create a wide range of artificial perovskite crystals following the same exact crystal arrangement and generate immensely useful properties out of them. In fact, even common lab chemicals like metal halide salts, lead iodide, or some organic salts can be combined to make these inorganic organic hybrid perovskite crystals. You can form them in a solution or alternatively in a vacuum in vapor form, which can later be condensed. The thin films of these crystals are also multi-layered, resulting in them being excellent semiconductors. So now that you know the basic structure of a perovskite solar cell, the question is just how efficient are they? Are perovskite cells really the holy grail of solar technology like scientists have deemed them to be? And if so, why aren't we manufacturing them on a larger scale and harnessing the sun's energy to its full potential? To understand 
understand why perovskites hold a fundamental advantage over silicon solar cells that we're used to seeing, let's dive a little deeper into how photovoltaic cells convert sunlight into electricity. Mechanism of a photovoltaic cell A solar cell is made up of two different parts, a top and a bottom, both of which contain semiconductor materials with different electrical properties. In the case of a silicon solar cell, both layers are doped with small amounts of different elements in order to create varying electrical charges. These two portions, one of which contains a higher concentration of free negatively charged electrons and the other containing more positively charged holes or missing electrons, are referred to as the n-type and p-type regions, respectively. The boundary between them is called the p-n junction. When the two layers are in contact, the free electrons and the free holes move across and cancel each other out. Gradually, the electrons start filling up the holes, creating a built-in electric field. This corresponds to a voltage, and the field acts like a one-way valve for charge barriers. So, when a photon, the fundamental unit of light, falls on this solar cell, it immediately gets absorbed into the cell, creating an extra electron and hole which are subsequently separated by the electric fields and pulled to opposite sides of the cells. And thus, a photocurrent is generated. Attach a pair of electrodes to both sides of the cell, forming an electric circuit, and voila, you have a steady flow of current as long as the sun shines. Disadvantages of PV cells Although remarkable, single junction solar cells are limited in their capacity and can only absorb a restricted portion of the solar spectrum, primarily depending on the semiconductor material. A wide spectrum of photons of energy that can't be absorbed by the semiconductor material will inevitably go to waste. These photons are usually the ones with energies less than the band gap of the semiconductor material. You can think of the band gap as the lowest energy of light that a single material can absorb. This is where perovskites truly stand out. Their band gaps can easily be changed, which means you can stack perovskite layers on top of each other, resulting in a structure that is chemically optimized to absorb different parts of the solar spectrum. This level of efficiency is particularly interesting because it took more than 20 years of research on silicon-based solar cells to reach the kind of efficiency that perovskite solar cells reached in a mere two years. But that is not where the magic ends. Along with the efficient performance, perovskites have the added advantage of being easy to manufacture as well. These thin films can be man-made by first developing a solar ink and gradually heating the liquid until the material crystallizes. The entire process of manufacturing a perovskite solar cell is considerably simpler than pretty much any other solar technology on the market today. In fact, you can synthesize these cells using various industrial processes like spin coating, screen printing, electrode position, or even by printing the material on a sheet through an inkjet printer. Researchers have recently started combining perovskite solar cells with conventional silicon solar cells. Nanotextured designs, or surfaces covered with nano-sized structures, can achieve a power conversion efficiency above 29%, which, according to experiments, could be further improved with better fabrication techniques. Limitations of perovskites So, if perovskite solar cells are so incredible, what's preventing their mass production and integration into all our daily lives? It's worth remembering that researchers don't play favorites and that new technologies are often judged holistically before commercial production. The main issue with perovskite solar cells is film quality and thickness. The material, despite its innumerable advantages, breaks down easily, especially when exposed to heat, moisture, snow, or other such external factors. That pretty much restricts the use of perovskite solar cells to only certain regions where the climate is suitable throughout the year or on devices that you only use for a limited period. Moreover, the material is highly toxic in nature, so scientists need to be extra careful with precautionary measures when developing perovskite solar cells, and they still need to come up with processes that will make industrial-scale production safe. Nonetheless, I'm still positive that perovskites will increasingly be used for commercial purposes in the near future, and that the possibility of integrated solar panels on trucks, buses, and cars is not that far-fetched. In fact, I'm hopeful that we might get to see buildings or even skyscrapers covered in transparent photovoltaic glass windows that generate electricity. Right, that's it from me today. What do you think about the future of this incredible solar 3.0 technology? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, if you're interested in learning more about everything new in the world of science and technology, check out the other videos on the cards. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.